Ever wonder why the cue ball does what it does when you hit it a certain way? Would you like to know the precise trajectory the balls will take after you make your shot? How does applying English affect the cue ball, the object ball, and the rail contact that follows? How do your stance, grip, bridge, and stroke affect your pool game? These are just a few of the questions Master Instructor Jerry Bryset will answer for you in this, the definitive video on How to Play Pool Right. Jerry Bryseth is considered by many to be the foremost billiard instructor in the country. For over 30 years now, Jerry has coached and taught hundreds of players, from the top pros of today to beginners just starting out. His unique method of teaching allows players of any level to improve and hone their pocket billiard skills. And now, the Billiard Congress of America proudly presents Master Billiard Instructor, Jerry Bryseth. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryseth. Over the next hour or so, I'm going to take you step by step through some of the most important elements of the game of pocket billiards. We'll begin with the fundamentals of cue selection, stance, grip, and stroke. Next, we'll show you exactly what happens from the moment you address the cue ball to the moment when the balls come to rest. We'll talk about developing a shooting system that will automatically improve your game. And we'll explain how speed of stroke and where you hit the cue ball affects the outcome of every shot. Finally, we'll give you some exercises and practice methods to help you solidify those concepts and build yourself a powerful and consistent pool game. First, let's talk a little bit about selecting a cue stick. One of the things to think about is the size of the shaft. Almost every cue manufacturer today makes their shafts 13 millimeters, and if your hand is a little smaller, you might want one 12 and a half or a little smaller than 13. If your hand is a little bigger, you might want a shaft that's 13 and a half or 13 and a quarter. Now let's talk about the weight of a cue. Cue makers make cues that range in weight from 16 to 22 ounces, but keep in mind most pros use 18 to 20 ounce cues. For 100 years all cue makers made cues 57 inches in length, but because the pool players have gotten taller over the years they now make cues 58, 59, even 60 inches in length for the taller players. Another consideration is what kind of cue to buy? There are dozens and dozens of manufacturers out there making thousands of models of cues. And it really doesn't matter whether you choose a $200 cue, an $800 cue, or one of these exotic $15,000 collector cues. Get the one that feels good and looks good to you. Get the best one you can afford. It is essential that every pool player that wants to play well and consistently must learn the basic fundamentals, stance, grip, stroke, and shooting system. And it's ironic in my more than 30 years of teaching this game, uh, teaching all levels of players is like a clock. From uh, noon to three o'clock is all the beginners. We teach those all the stance, stroke, shooting system, so forth. Then when they get a little more advanced, the three to six group of players, we teach them pattern play, a little safety play, etc. Then the very good amateur players from 6 to 9 o'clock, more advanced pattern play, more advanced safeties, when to break up balls, when to break up clusters, so forth. And then when a top player comes in for help, he's in a slump, all basics again. So we're going to take a little while and talk about some of those basics. The first thing we need to look at is the stance. There are three parts of a stance, comfort, alignment, and clearance. Comfort means just what it says, about 50% of the weight on each foot. Some pros, when they bend over the table, they've got the back leg stiff and the front one bent like this. Others elect to bend both knees a little bit. But the important thing is that 50-50. You don't want all the weight on the front or all the weight on the back foot. The next thing is alignment, very important. Alignment means that when you're in your shooting position, it must be a straight vertical line down the cue stick, up the middle of the arm, right through this part of the shoulder, like this. 
If you have improper alignment and the elbow's out here, the cue wants to go like this. Or if the elbow is back in, the cue stick doesn't want to go straight, as you can see. Proper alignment is very important. The next thing on, uh, that we're going to talk about is clearance. That means the cue clearing the body on the stroke. If you're too close to the body and you follow through, if the hand hits your body, you've got to back up a little bit, change your stance a little bit, because the hand must not touch the body as it follows through. So that's comfort, alignment, clearance, and keep in mind there are a lot of good stances. Some pros get way out here when they shoot, some a little closer, some turn their feet 45 degrees, some turn their feet 90 degrees to the shot. It's all correct if you have comfort, alignment, and the proper clearance. Next on the list of basic fundamentals is the grip. That's what this back hand, or in my case my right hand, is doing on this cue stick. The biggest problem amateurs have with this grip is they squeeze too hard as they're striking the cue ball. It's easy to hang on loose when you're warming up, but the good players don't grab the cue nearly as tightly as they go through the cue ball. Some pros like to hang on with one or two fingers along with the thumb. Some like all their fingers on the cue. It doesn't matter as long as you don't grab the cue at impact. And as you can see here, it looks like a closed fist around the cue stick, but you can see it's wide open in the back. That's a good looking grip. And also, we don't want the wrist bent under or bent back. We want it naturally hanging straight down. Now the next question is, where to put this hand when you're shooting. When the cue tip is at impact, at the cue ball, this hand should be at the bottom of this pendulum motion, which is right there. It's okay to be at the bottom of the pendulum or a little bit forward, but never strike the cue ball while the hand is behind the bottom of the pendulum motion. As you can see, at my height, with my length arms, I would hang on to the cue near the end of the grip to be straight under the elbow. Whereas someone with shorter arms, with narrower shoulders, for them to be straight under the elbow, they'd have to move the hand in this part of the grip. So that can change with how tall you are, and it can also change with how long your bridge is. Longer bridge, hang on back farther. Shorter bridge, this moves up accordingly. So that you know when your arm is straight at the bottom, that's where you strike the cue ball. Finally, let's talk about something beginners have a lot of trouble with, the bridge. There are three bridges we're going to teach you about, the open bridge, the closed bridge, and the rail bridge. We're going to start with an open bridge. To accomplish an open bridge, lay the hand flat on the table, cup the hand, a lot of people when they start doing this, bend these knuckles here, wrong, cup the hand here, and then make a V with your thumb and squeeze that finger because that thumb is what the cue sits on and the cue touches the skin on the thumb and the skin on this finger. Now what happens a lot is the cue will press against this fatty tissue here and that can make the cue sticky. So what we do is turn the fingers under the cue just a little bit so now the cue only touches this area and does not touch here. And here's what that looks like, like so. With this open bridge, the nice thing about it is it's so solid. It should be pressed on the table and it should not move. And whether you shoot above center, in the middle, or below center, it's so easy to adjust the height on the cue ball just by pulling or pushing on the fingers. That's what makes this bridge so nice. Another reason we want to teach all beginners to use an open bridge is it trains them not to squeeze with this back hand. When you're using a closed bridge and you squeeze when you shoot, it's hard to tell. But with an open bridge, if you squeeze when you shoot, the cue will fly up in the air, and that looks pretty funny. So it's possible to shoot very hard without the cue coming off that thumb, and that's what we want you to understand. The next bridge we're going to talk about is a closed bridge. 
In a closed bridge, this finger comes around the cue and touches the end of the thumb, and the middle finger goes under the thumb for supporting the thumb. This bridge also is very solid. As you can see, the entire side of the hand is on the table. Very solid bridge. To adjust this bridge, you just slide the fingers out. I'm just turning the hand up on its side farther for above center or for below center. Very solid bridge, a little tricky to get if you're a beginner, but it's pretty easy to learn after you shoot 50 or 60 balls with this bridge. It's called a closed bridge. Again, stability is the name of the game on a bridge. It's important to know that professional players, when you watch them play in tournaments, use both open bridges and closed bridges. And you'll see that generally if they use power on a shot or if they're putting a lot of spin on the cue ball, they'll generally close up the bridge. So I will shoot this shot nice and slow, stop the cue ball below center, open bridge is fine. But if I was gonna shoot this shot with a lot of power and say draw the cue ball back to the other end of the table, then I'd wanna close up the bridge using more power. One bridge that gives everybody problems is the bridge where the cue ball is zero to three inches from the rail. Most people really butcher this bridge. They put the thumb under, they elevate the cue way up in the air, and now they're bounce aiming. They can't aim very straight. Remember, a level cue helps you aim the straightest you possibly can. So what we do with the cue ball is close to the rail is we hold the cue almost level. It's only elevated in the back a little bit and we adjust this thumb here so it just barely touches the cloth here. So when you're stroking, you don't press on the cloth, but the cue should barely touch it. And when you shoot, the important thing is the cue stick, the shaft, should be touching the cloth here when the shot is completely over with. Watch that once more. As the cue goes through the ball, the cue remains touching here. If it doesn't remain touching, that means you dropped the elbow, the tip went up in the air, and you probably miscued. The other rail bridge is when the cue ball is three to 10 inches away from the cushion. This is the easiest bridge in the whole pool game. The reason it's so easy, all you have to do is lay the cue on the rail, put the hand flat next to the cue, and put one finger over the top. These two fingers keep the cue from wiggling back and forth. Easiest bridge in a pool game. It's level, easy to use, easy to sight down the cue. Probably the biggest mistake made in using this bridge is, again, putting that thumb under the cue. I go to so many amateur tournaments around the country, and people are elevating the cue, shooting this kind of a shot. The cue should be on the rail, level, this is a friendly bridge, so easy to use, easiest one in the whole game of pool. An important thing to remember on rail bridges is you always want to maintain a bridge length of four to five inches. So as you can see, if I were shooting straight off the rail, this does not, this does not give me my four to five inches, so I revert to this bridge like this. Although if I was shooting the same shot at this angle, now I have my four to, four to five inches minimum, so I can use this bridge. When the cue ball is close to or on the rail, and the angle you're shooting is almost parallel to the rail, we get into an area we call contortion bridges. As you can see, if I was shooting away from the rail a little bit, I could use this bridge, very simple. But now that I get along more parallel, now it's harder to get a solid bridge, so sometimes you have to drop one finger over and contort your hand a little bit. Now if I'm aiming a little more parallel with the rail, I drop another finger off and stabilize the cue with a nice solid bridge. These are called contortion bridges and you just have to do the best you can. There is a bridge that most pool players consider to be the most difficult and that's the bridge we use when we shoot over a ball, as in this case. This is a very difficult bridge. I'm gonna show you an easy way to get there, but don't let anybody tell you this is easy. Make a normal open bridge. 
spread the fingers apart, set the cue on it. Now watch when I just pick up the hand and only elevate the cue just enough to get over the top of the 10 ball. Many people make the mistake of elevating more than they have to. Just enough elevation to clear the 10 ball. Watch, watch it again now. Open bridge, spread the fingers, pick up the hand, just enough elevation to clear the 10. Finally, if you get a shot that you just can't reach, then you have to bring out the mechanical bridge. Some people have a lot of trouble with this until they learn a few basic things about the bridge. Treat it as an extension of your left arm. Place it 8 to 10 inches from the cue ball. And notice it has several variations here. I'll choose this one. Now when you use a mechanical bridge, this hand goes from here over the top like this. And a lot of people think that you have to keep the mechanical bridge parallel with a cue stick. That's not true. Get it over here so you can just wiggle it around, kind of lean on it. Now you get your cue. If the cue kind of points at, the, at your neck, that'll put your eyes above the cue to give you a nice 3D picture of where the Q-tip is. So when you take your warm-up swings, the elbow is straight off to the side here. And when you shoot, your job is to make the cue go straight ahead like this. The word stroke is one of the most mysterious words in pool. If you ask 25 good players what a stroke is, you'll get 25 different answers. And about 20 or 25 years ago, a then world champion was asked, what is a good stroke? And he said, it's indefinable. But the instructions have come a long way since then, and we can now do it. I'm going to tell you what a very good stroke is because it's a basis for everything you do at the pool table. A good stroke is a beautiful throwing motion. And that means in pool that you're throwing the cue four to six inches past the ball. And what makes a stroke a beautiful throwing motion is the backswing, back slow accelerate, as in golf swing or as in a baseball pitcher back slow accelerate has the it's a bit creates the best timing and gives you the best stroke when we do that in pool we try to move just below the elbow so you go back slow and accelerate through the ball and the distance of the follow through if you don't move the elbow too much you will follow through four to six inches once we know what a good stroke is it's easy to spot flaws in a stroke. For instance, a good stroke is back slow, accelerate through the ball. If a person doesn't have a good follow through and doesn't follow through far enough, it looks like this. Back slow, stop. Not a good stroke. If a person goes back too fast, which is the biggest flaw of all amateurs, it looks like this. Not a very good looking stroke. Before we go any farther, Let's take another look at first what a good stroke really is. Stops, back slow, accelerate four to six inches through the ball. Now that we know that, it's easy to tear at some of the flaws. First of all, we'll show no follow through. That means the hand is squeezing the cue to a stop at impact. Now we'll show the biggest flaw pool players make too fast of a backswing. As you can see, it does not look like a smooth stroke. Now that you learned some of the basics of the game, it's about time we teach you a shooting system. Involved with that shooting system is learning how to aim properly. And believe it or not, most of your aiming is done before and while you bend over it to shoot the shot. And one of the first thing we're going to show you here is how to play a little game with yourself called chin lock. Learning to do chin lock is kind of a game you play with yourself. And what it involves is before you even bend over, you must line the chin up in a straight line with the chin, the cue ball, 
and where you want the cue ball to go, in this case the pocket. Now I'm going to make this look funny. Every pro does this, a lot of them don't even know they do it, but the first thing they do when they walk around and do a shot is lock the chin, and then as they bend over, the body gets out of the way. And if you don't keep your eyes going back and forth, if you just stare at the cue ball, you're, you, you won't know where that pocket is and your chin will change its location and no longer will be straight. So it's very important that as you're bending over, the eyes go back and forth. So the first time you get the cue stick up to the ball, you're this close to your target. Now watch again, here we go. You come over, lock the chin. This has to get out of the way. Keep the eyes going back and forth, so the first time you're up to the ball, you're that straight. Once you are down in position, you can go on to the next two parts of the shooting system. Before we shoot a shot, we have to get two things out of the way. First, we have to make sure the cue is pointing in exactly the direction we want it to. Second, we have to make sure this arm is moving the cue stick perfectly straight back and forth. When amateurs or beginners do it, they don't do those things one at a time. They do it like this. They bend over and they're changing their aim. The cue never stops. They're warming up. They're aiming at the same time. And all of a sudden they shoot and you can't even tell when they're going to shoot. Sometimes they don't know when they're going to shoot. So it's so important to have a system and do those things one at a time. And here's what I mean. First thing you do is aim. Just stop the cue and move the eyes back and forth. Then take a couple of straight, smooth warm-ups. Remember, when you shoot pool, your job is really not to make the ball. Your final job is to make the cue stick go perfectly straight four to six inches through the ball. So keep that in mind. It's very important to understand. Back to the system. Take a couple warm-ups and stop and check. If you don't like it, if anything is wrong, fix it and warm up again and stop. The purpose of the stop is to say to yourself, what do you think, should I shoot? Once you stop and say, I like that, that looks perfect. Now we get to that stroke we talked about earlier. Back slow, throw the stick four to six inches directly over the spot. You know, learning this shooting system is the most important part of this tape all the knowledge of playing the balls off, shooting pool in general, is worthless without a good shooting system. And the best teaching aid I have ever found teaching the game of pool is this spot. Because the spot tells you immediately if the cue stick is going straight or crooked, how far it's going, one, zero, two, three, four, six inches. Using the spot to practice is the best thing you can do. When you master the shooting system, master it first shooting no object ball in the hole, just balls off the spot into the pocket until you master having the stick do exactly what it's supposed to do. Then put an object ball down the table. Now what happens when you put an object ball down the table is your target is much smaller. So what people do, people have a much greater tendency to want to steer, make a last second steering of the cue to help the cue ball go where it's supposed to go. So a good test and great practice is to put an object ball down near the pocket and see if when the shot is over, see if the cue stick is straight across the dot like it's supposed to be. And remember, be sure not to move your head during the shot, very important. The best thing you can do is practice off the spot. Now that you've learned a shooting system, we're going to show you how to use an aiming system. I have the five ball set up here, and I have the number turned straight out from the pocket. If I was going to shoot the five ball in the side pocket with my cue stick, my brain quickly draws a line from the pocket through the middle of the five out this side and I have to shoot back on that line. And in this case hitting the number five right in the center. When you use the cue ball to make an object ball, the cue ball also has to touch that five right in the center. And that's called the point of impact. 
and no matter where, what position the cue ball starts in, when it arrives at the five, it's got to be a straight line in the pocket. Now, straight under the center of this cue ball is where it sits on the cloth, and we're going to call that the point of aim. So, if I have a straight in shot, the point of aim is on the same plane as the point of impact. But as soon as I have an angle on the shot, the point of aim is now not the same on the same plane as the point of impact. They start separating. And as I bring the cue ball around to this angle, the point of aim is way over here. The point of impact is here. So every shot you shoot is the same. You've got to put the cue ball on this point of aim in order for it to touch the point of impact. The farther you are from that point of aim, the tougher it is to hit it and the tougher the shot is. Some people prefer to think of the point of aim, point of impact system in another way. They think of it as a ghost ball system. Whereas when they line up the shot, they picture the cue ball sitting right here and they picture the ghost ball that they have to replace with the cue ball. They both work identical and whichever one you choose is fine. So far we've talked about an aiming system, a shooting system, what a good stroke is. Now we're going to put it all together. And one of the first shots you got to learn about is a straight in shot. And what we're going to show you and explain how to do is first make the cue ball run after the object ball when it's a straight in shot. Like that. And the next thing you have to learn to do is to make the cue ball stop. And we're going to show you why it happens and how to do it. Like this. Then we're also going to teach you on the same shot how to make the cue ball come back towards you after striking the object ball. You've probably all seen a professional player shoot a shot like this where he strikes a seven ball and the cue ball stops momentarily and then it's just spinning so fast the cue ball takes off and heads in the direction that the object ball went. That's called a follow shot. And what's happening is when the cue ball is struck way above center like this, it imparts a lot of overspin on the ball. So when the ball gets to the seven, strikes the seven, it stops momentarily, but it's still got a lot of spin on it. Then it runs down the table like this. And when we do this, you notice we're using a stripe so you can really see the spin that's happening to the cue ball. The stop shot. Probably the most important shot in the whole game of pool. Let's talk about what happens on a stop shot. In order for, for the cue ball to stop here, you've got to do something to the cue ball somewhere below center to cause it to overcome this friction. The friction between the two balls will put overspin on the cue ball. And you have to overcome that friction because the only way the cue ball can stop here is if this ball arrives sliding with no spin. It's the only way the cue ball can stop. So there are many ways to do that. First, we can hit the cue ball almost up to the center. And if we shoot hard, the cue ball will almost slide all the way to the seven. But sometimes we want to shoot the stop shot softer. So we shoot a little bit lower, which imparts a little more backspin on the ball. So the ball spins backwards a little bit, overcoming that friction. And as it moves down the table, the spin disappears. And again, it arrives here with no spin. Third, and we're going to show you this, we're going to shoot extremely low on the cue ball. And, ex and much softer. So now the cue ball will have a lot more spin, a little less, a little less, and it'll arrive here again with no spin. First, I'm going to strike the cue ball almost dead center and watch what happens. As you can see, the cue ball stopped. Now, I'm going to strike the cue ball lower so it puts more spin on the cue ball and you'll see the cue ball 
has more spin on it, but I'll try to make it arrive at the four with no spin. First one was here, second one I'm going to shoot about here, much softer. And you can see the back spin on the ball. Now I'm going to shoot the same stop shot, much softer, by shooting the cue ball much lower. As you can see, uh, there are many variations to stop shots. And when pros shoot stop shots, we like to shoot them a little bit lower and a little bit softer. Their accuracy is better that way. And you also have to understand that when the distance is great between the object ball and the cue ball, you do have to add more power. But by shooting a little lower, you'll be more accurate on these shots. Finally, the draw shot. The draw shot gives amateurs and beginners a lot of problems for a couple of reasons. Usually, it's the system we talked about and the stroke that they don't do correctly. Many amateurs think, and beginners, that you have to elevate the cue and poke the cue ball in order to make it come back. That's not the way it is. What you're supposed to do is strike the cue ball near the bottom and throw the stick four to six inches, just like any other stroke, right through the cue ball. It is very important when you do this, any shot that you're using a lot of spin, that you be sure to chalk up, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what causes a draw shot to happen is you're putting a lot of backspin on the ball by shooting way below center, so that when this cue ball arrives here, it is still has a lot of spin on it. It stops momentarily and comes back like this. Notice the cue is just back slow, th throw the cue four to six inches right through the ball. That should help you a lot. Before we talk about English, which requires putting a lot of spin on the cue ball, we're going to talk about chalking up. I have taken the chalk, most of the chalk, off my tip to show you what happens if it's not chalked up properly. If I hit the cue ball directly in the center, I never need chalk. It'll go down the table and come straight back. Now, with, without proper chalking, if I try to hit the cue ball on the left side, you'll hear a funny sound called a miss cue, like that. Now, if I use right hand spin, you'll see with improper chalking, you'll see another miss cue, like that. And if you shoot the cue ball below center, instead of putting back spin on, it will jump. And we don't like that to happen either. So it's very important now that we show you the difference between chalking up correctly and incorrectly. When an amateur or a beginner miscues, they don't even look at the tip. They just rub a little chalk on it and prepare to shoot again. But if you'll notice very closely here, you can see he missed the brown miscue marks on the cue and those must be covered with chalk. Matter of fact, the only place you ever really need chalk is the outer eighth of an inch of the cue stick. It's the only place it's ever possible to miss cue. So be sure when you chalk up, you look at the outer eighth of an inch and chalk that up. When you do that properly, now we'll go back and we'll shoot the ball way on the left side again now watch what happens. You see the ball going down the table with lots of left hand spin. The same thing now if I shoot with right hand spin. Pros chalk up just about every shot. And remember the outer eighth of an inch is the important area on the Q-tip. Now right hand spin. You'll see the ball spinning to the right. The same thing applies now to the bottom of the ball. Lot, well, I better chalk up a little bit. Now watch the back spin here on the cue ball. So it is so important that you chalk up the tip 
and be sure that you use a good grade of chalk too. Um, the chalk contains a, a silica sand and other substances that create a tremendous amount of friction between the tip and the cue ball. So it is a, something very necessary to play pool. Now we're ready to move into side spin or English. Using side spin on the cue ball is a very necessary evil to play the game of pool well. Let me show you what it does. First, if I shoot the cue ball against the bottom rail with no spin, hitting the cue ball in the center, you'll see that the ball comes straight back. Now, if I want the cue ball to come over in this area, I move the tip to the left side of the cue ball, and you'll see what happens when it hits the bottom rail. Likewise, if I want the cue ball to come on this side of the table, I'll shoot the ball with some right hand spin and cause it to come on this side of the table. The problem with using English is it does three things to make us miss. First of all, if I strike the cue ball on the left side, some of this force pushes the cue ball a little offline to my right. That's called deflection or squirt, some people call it. Second of all, especially if you elevate the cue a little bit and hit it below center on the left side, it'll deflect to the right then some of that spin can make it curve back, but it will never curve back to the straight line. It'll still keep going to the right. The third thing that can happen with side spin is this. When the cue ball gets to the object ball with this side spin, some of this spin creates a lot of friction where the balls touch, causing the seven to be pushed offline from where the, the line of the two balls colliding. That's called throw. So three things happen when you use English. Deflection off the tip is first, then curving on the way sometimes, and throwing the object ball. Of the three things I've talked about demonstrating using side spin on the cue ball, first the deflection, then the curve, then the throw, the deflection is by far the most troublesome. It causes us to miss nine out of 10 shots that we miss when we use side spin. Now I have a couple balls set up to demonstrate that. First I'm going to put no English on the cue ball and I'm going to aim the stick right between those balls and the cue ball comes almost straight back. Now if I use a lot of left hand spin, some of this energy is going to push the cue ball off to the right. So instead of aiming my cue stick parallel with left hand spin like this, I must aim way over there because if you use left hand spin, it just keeps going farther to the right the longer the shot is. So I'm gonna have to aim about two inches different from where I'd aim with no spin. Watch. As you can see here, my Q-tip is pointing through the left side of the ball at about one third of the two ball. Watch where the cue ball goes, right between the balls. Now, I'm going to use right hand spin. And now the opposite will happen. As I use right hand spin, I'm going to have to aim my cue stick right about there in order for the 15 ball to arrive between those balls. So as you can see now, the tip is pointed at about one third of that seven ball. And you'll see it went between the balls. So that little de demonstration shows you how scary it is to use side spin. You must aim crooked to make the shot. Now I've set up a shot to demonstrate the effects of side spin and to show you what, how you allow for deflection when shooting a shot. First of all, I'm going to shoot the four ball in the pocket. Again, I'm using a stripe for a cue ball. And I'm going to shoot above center with no spin. And as you can see, I'm going to aim the cue stick right about there. So this edge of the 15, it's that edge of the four. Watch where the cue ball wants to go. It wants to go over here. Not too good if I want to shoot the seven ball next. So now English comes into play. So I'm going to put the four ball back. And you can see I've got the four ball turned here. So I got the middle of the white number four over here. So if I use first, 
I want to get the cue ball up there so I can shoot the seven in this pocket. And let's just say there are a couple of balls in my way here, so I can't come across the table and up for the seven. So I elect to use left hand spin where the cue ball makes the four, hits the rail, comes this way, this way, and up for the seven ball. So for a shot like this, I want, I'm going to hit the four right in the middle of the number four, but using left hand spin, I'm going to have deflection. And if I want to hit the four ball right there, using quite a bit of left hand spin, you can see how I'm going to have to aim to the left. I'm going to have to allow for about that much deflection. So I'm going to aim there, and you'll see how the cue ball arrives right there. Watch. Now as you can see, I'm no longer aiming at the point of aim. I've moved my aim to the left because I'm using left hand spin. Now watch what happens. And we have position on the seven ball. Now I'm going to set up the same shot. But now I have interfering balls down here. So now I want to use low right hand spin to bring the cue ball here and over to this rail again for position on a seven. Now, again, the cue ball, I want to arrive at that point. So now when I'm using right hand spin, it's gonna push the 15 to the left about this far. So I'm gonna allow about this much deflection. Pretty scary when you first learn to do this, but that's where I'm gonna have to aim the cue ball for it to arrive there, watch. As you can see, my, it almost looks like I'm going to whiff the shot to get the cue ball back for position on a seven. Remember, any time you use side spin, it causes deflection of the cue ball. And the way you learn about deflection is shooting easy shots like you saw me shoot here and learn how your cue deflects with your stroke. Every cue deflects a little bit different, but with practice, you'll be comfortable with it and you'll play a lot better position. Here I've set up a little demonstration again to show the effect that English has and you know, how to use it to get position on a ball. First I'm going to shoot the three in the pocket and again I'm using a 15 so you can see the spin. I'm going to shoot way above center on the cue ball with follow with no side spin. Watch where it goes and you can see it heads over about in the direction of the 11 ball. Now I'll set up the same angle, but now I want to get above the 11 here so I can shoot the 11 down in this pocket. So I'm going to shoot above center again with a little bit of right hand spin. Watch the, watch the cue ball with a little spin on it, stretch the angle out to go past the side pocket. Above center, a little bit of right hand spin and you'll see it stretched the angle out past the side pocket. Now the same shot, and I've marked them so I have exactly the same angle. Now I'll use even more spin, a little more deflection here to allow for, but you can see I'm way above center and way over to the right. And you'll see it takes off a completely different angle. So with a little practice using side spin, you can get quite proficient and learn how to play position. A few years ago, the Billiard Congress of America started a certified instructors program. There are now close to 100 certified instructors all across North America and even in Europe. So no matter where you live, you can call the BCA and they can put you in touch with a certified instructor in your area. Each instructor certified by the BCA has years of experience teaching not only beginners but advanced players as well. All certified instructors use the latest in teaching techniques including a detailed video analysis of the student's strengths and weaknesses. So when you're interested in personalized instruction, give the BCA a call at the number on your screen and get started today on a program to bring your game to the highest level possible. In our final segment, we're going to show first how a beginner can learn to make angle shots and memorize angle shots very quickly. 
and then we're going to get into more advanced aspects of position play so we can put everything you learn together to play better pool. First, for a beginner, place the cue ball on the spot. And then I have three marks, one here, one here, and one here. The first shot is, as you can see, a very slight angle. And for a beginner to do this, open bridge is fine, go through your system, the last thing you do is stop and say, I think that'll work, then go straight ahead, very slow speed. And notice the cue stick maybe only goes two or three inches when you're shooting this soft. But remember that the cue stick must go straight. It's all right to miss the shot, but the cue stick must go straight. And usually, you will be very consistent. You'll overcut or undercut the shot. So keep repeating until you make four or five of these in a row using the system, stop, back slow, accelerate through the ball. Next, we'll put the ball on the second spot. Now obviously you can see there's a lot more angle here. So go through your system. And when you think you're aiming absolutely perfect, go back slow, push right through the ball. And it's all right again if you overcut or undercut. Repeat this shot until you see the angle. Very important. Next, we'll go to the third one. Here, it's obvious you can see I'm going to have to aim the cue stick way over here at this point of aim. Go through your system, stop, execute very slow. And by the way, you can also watch where the cue ball goes. And at the same time you're learning these angles, you can learn a little bit about position the cue ball goes a little different place on each one of these shots. The next step for the beginner is to pull the cue ball back a foot, mark the spot, and shoot the same shots from a bigger distance. It's very, a lot more difficult this way. It's more difficult to hit that little point of aim and touch that point of impact. For the beginner, the best way to learn about position is with overspin or follow. Well, I have a shot set up here that will teach you a lot about position using overspin. Now, if you're a beginner, you might put the balls closer to the hole like this because I want you to make the shot every time. I have the balls marked here, so I'll have the same shot every time, and that's what you should do, too, for this exercise. Now, what I want you to observe is when I shoot the cue ball above center, you'll see where it goes, and 50% of what position is, is memory. Where did the cue ball go? The last five times I shot this shot above center. Now watch. And by the way, we want to shoot this at least a tip or a tip and a half above center. Now watch where the cue ball goes. It hit the rail here, it hit the rail here, and comes down towards this corner pocket. Now I'm going to shoot the shot again using the same spot and here's what a lot of people that play for years don't really know. If I shoot the cue ball exactly the same place, watch where it goes this time. Same exact place. That cue ball will go within two or three inches of this pocket every single time. So what can we learn from that? We learn first memory, where the cue ball goes. Now guess what the other 50% of position is? Speed control. And by that I mean this. If I would have shot the cue ball about this hard and had a ball here, I'd have perfect position on the four. If I would have shot a couple of feet farther, I would have good position on the seven. If I would have shot a couple more feet, I'd have position on the three. If I'd have shot a little bit harder and the cue ball would be in this area, I'd have position on the six. And if I'd have shot down near this corner pocket, I would have had perfect position on the one ball. And now I'm going to demonstrate that a few times. First, I'm going to try to, my memory says the cue ball is going to go here, here, and down towards the corner pocket. What I'm going to try to do first is play position on this three ball. Watch. Okay. Next, and notice we've allowed 12 to 15 inches of error room because we want you to get close 
That's very good. Now I'm going to shoot the same shot, and I'm going to try to get position on this one ball. So you'll see I'll add some power. I know exactly where it's going. Now all I have to do is add enough power to get down here so I have a shot at the one ball, like so. I didn't want to get too close to this corner pocket on that shot. Now, the same shot, I'm going to get position on the seven ball. I'll shoot a little bit softer. Okay, here we go. Remember, when doing this exercise, if when you pocket that ball and the cue ball doesn't go almost the same place every time within five or six inches, probably something's the matter with your shooting system. Check, make sure you're hitting the ball exactly the same above the center every time. This is a great exercise. You'll learn a lot about position with it. Before we get into more complex position play, it is imperative that we show you about the tangent line. The tangent line is a line between the two balls at impact. This line is called a tangent line. It is 90 degrees to the line of the two balls. Would you believe that every single angle shot that you shoot, the cue ball tries to go down that tangent line? In this case, the tangent line is right there. That's where it will hit the rail if the cue ball goes down the tangent line. Every shot you shoot, it tries to. The only way you can make a ball stay on the tangent line is to shoot a stop shot. Some people call this a stun shot. But when the, if the cue ball arrives at the object ball with no spin, as in a stop shot, it will stay on the tangent line until it hits something. If you shoot the same shot with overspin, and the cue ball arrives here with overspin, it will start out down the tangent line and the overspin will curve it into the rail. If we shoot the same shot with backspin and the cue ball arrives here with backspin, it will start out down the tangent line and then the backspin will change the direction and the cue ball will come back this way. First, I'm going to shoot a stop shot or a stun shot I'm going to cause the cue ball to arrive here with no spin, and you'll see the cue ball goes right down the tangent line. Because the balls are so close, I'm shooting just a little bit below center, and you can see the cue ball went straight down the tangent line. Now I'm going to shoot the same shot again, and I'm going to shoot above center. Now you'll see the cue ball try to go down the tangent line and then the overspin will change direction. Watch. Shooting about a tip and a half above center. You can see the cue ball hit way down there that, on that shot. Now I'm going to show you what backspin does. How it affects the cue ball going down the tangent line. The cue ball will start out down the tangent line and then the backspin will curve it back in this direction. Like this. Okay, very important. Every shot you shoot is some kind of variation of a stop shot. Every shot you shoot. Now we'll get into some more advanced position play. Now we're going to show you how we can use many different types of spin. High, low, high left, low right. Different types of spin to put the cue ball in different places for different situations of playing position all shooting the same shot. First of all, I'm going to shoot the cue ball above center. The first thing we're going to see is where does overspin go? No side spin. Watch where the cue ball goes. As you can see, it came in this area. Now, if I shoot the cue ball in the same place with a good system, the cue ball should come back within a few inches of where it came before, and you can see that it did. Now a situation. The three ball is here. I want to play position on the three ball. Same angle, same shot, but I want to get the cue ball here. So I'll shoot the same shot, same height above center, and I'll add a little bit of right hand spin. Watch. And you can see the cue ball change the angle off that rail 
so I could get position on a 3. Now I'm going to move the 3 up here. I'll shoot the same shot. Now I'll shoot almost a stop shot or a stun shot. So instead of the cue ball curving into the rail and coming here with English, I'll have it so it doesn't curve so much. It'll go almost down the tangent line and come over here for the three in this pocket. I'll shoot not quite so high, but just a little right hand spin. And you can see the cue ball comes now for position on a three ball. Okay, next I'm going to put the three ball here. Again, we'll shoot exactly the same shot. Two ways to get position here. I'll put some blocking balls here. Now, I want to get the cue ball here with more power to go down here for the three ball. So I'll shoot just a, almost a stop shot, a hair above center. I don't want it to come back this far, so it'll curve into the rail just a little, then come over here and down for the three ball. Watch, just a hair above center with a hair right hand spin with some power to go down for the three ball. Now, same situation, same shot. But now I have different obstacles in the way. Now, I'll shoot below center with a little curve so it hits the rail here with a little right hand spin to lengthen the angle to come here for the three ball. Little bit below center, little back spin, little right hand spin, like that. Same shot. But now I can't get here and I can't come over here. Now I'll use more back spin and just curve around and follow the rail down. A little bit lower, so I go past the side pocket. As you can see, by setting up a shot like we have here and repeating it, on this shot you can put the cue ball almost anywhere on the table. And with a little practice, you'll be able to do it too. There are several of these shots that are fun to practice. Here's another one with the ball about a foot from the side pocket with a slight angle on the cue ball. And again, be sure to mark the balls. Then experiment. See where overspin goes. Then try a couple of stun shots. Then a little bit of back spin. Uh, try a stun shot with a little left hand spin. A stun shot with a little right hand spin. By practicing like this, you can learn several years of position knowledge in just a few months. Finally, I'm going to show you a practice technique that speeds up the process of learning to play position. It's called ball in hand pool. First of all, we've got to explain what a pattern is. When you watch pros play, they make it look so easy because they see and play patterns. Playing patterns means this. You find the one easy shot and you make it. In this case, I could stop, shoot the 10 in the corner, stop the cue ball, and have another easy shot on the 15. Where if I shot the 10 and rolled up or came back, I would not have an easy shot at the 15. So that's what we call seeing and executing patterns. Another pattern here with a stripe is shoot the 10 ball in the corner, a little above center, roll up here for the 14 ball. Those are called patterns. But when, we, when beginners play pool, they seldom start with an easy shot. So we want them to play ball in hand pool. It means this, every time your opponent misses, every time you come to the table, you pick up the cue ball, put it anywhere you want, and start shooting. Now you're going to, even as a beginner, learn to see and execute patterns. For instance, if we see, if we have the solids here, we see that if I can put the cue ball here and shoot the one and stop the cue ball, shoot the seven, stop the cue ball, I can win the game, but we forgot about the five ball. How can we enter him into the pattern picture? If I leave a little angle on the five and shoot it in the side and shoot a stun shot and slide over here down the tangent line, I should have position on the one ball. Now I can execute the pattern. Now I'll stop the cue ball on the one, shoot the seven, stop the cue ball, shoot the eight. The best thing you can do as a beginner 
to learn to play pool quickly is play ball in hand pool. Well, that's about it for now. I sure enjoyed sharing this information with you. I want to suggest that you watch this video several times and apply the techniques we've discussed to your own game. If you do, I can guarantee it will improve the way you play any game of pocket billiards. And you know, the better you play, the more you'll learn to love this sport the way I do. Thanks for watching. And remember, slow down that backswing. The BCA would like to thank the Billiard and Bowling Institute of America and the Sporting Goods Manufacturers Association for the grant that made this video possible.